Welcome to Healthy's deep dive video on calendar. Today, we're gonna to show you how to set up and use your healthy calendar, both for individuals and for larger organizations. So first, what we're gonna talk about is setting up your calendar, doing some, uh, making some back end changes so that when you're ready to schedule, everything is in place exactly how we want it when we're ready to begin scheduling. Where we do all of our setup is going to be under that gear icon on the top right of your main page. Go ahead and select settings. In general, there are a lot of settings that live in this area for setting up all different types of aspects of your account. What we're gonna focus on today is the calendar settings here. We'll walk through those together. Um, calendar. So the first one is appointments. So under appointment settings, these are where you can edit all of your default settings for you and your organization in one area. Some of these um, include what start and end time you want visible on your calendar, the different contact types you offer, um, whether you want to disable or allow same day appointments, um, a few other different features down here. One that's really important to set up before you start scheduling is what reminders do you want each client to receive about an appointment? Within Healthy, there's a lot of automated emails that go out, including when, a, when an appointment is scheduled, also in those reminder emails as well. So you can send to text and reminders four appointments up to four days before. So something to definitely decide what my cadence is, how these I wanna turn on, how many of these I wanna turn on. I definitely recommend at least doing one day before for a text and uh, uh, an email. Um, but this is where you're able to set all of that up. When you're going through these, don't forget to select save on the bottom to update all of your changes. The next decision and setup that we will do is appointment types. Um, within Healthy, you can create any kind of appointment site that you're currently offering or any, for any type of service. So for example, if we look at some of the ones that have already been created, I have a virtual follow-up, uh, initial assessment. Uh, maybe I want to have a free discovery call where I, it's a little shorter call to get to know people to see if it's a good fit to work with them. Um, to create these appointments, you're just going to select add new type on the top right. For this one, we'll go ahead and give it an example. We'll just call this one discovery call as well. Um, you can decide if you want this to be a group appointment. And here's also where you decide if you what length of the appointment you want. Since this is a discovery call, we'll make it a little bit shorter because we don't want to take up too much time. And then we can also decide what contact types we want for this appointment as well. Within Healthy, uh, you can engage with your clients through video call or telehealth, uh, phone call, or of course, in person. For this one, since it is a discovery call, it's gonna be a little bit shorter. We're gonna relegate this one to a video call and phone call. When we're finished creating that appointment, we're gonna go ahead and select appointment type here. Awesome. So once that appointment type is created, we're also able to drag and drop and move those and change the order for visually on your end and for clients here as well. Appointment locations. This is where you're able to manage your appointment locations and rooms if you have it. So this would be if I work at different, different sites over the same area, or if I have multiple rooms in one or one place that I'm working in, and I wanna be able to schedule those rooms as well. Um, all we need to do to, to set this up is select add appointment locations here, and put in a location there. So let's go ahead and label this Brooklyn office. I can select it, it can be booked by clients and if location, if this location has rooms. So for example, in this one, I'm gonna add meeting room one, limit capacity to one. So this way when I'm scheduling on my end or a client is booking, only one client would be able to be added to that room to prevent double booking. Um, you can also select another room where maybe this is a conference room. Where I, this is where I hold uh, some of my in-person webinars. So I have multiple, multiple people joining. So I don't want to limit capacity to one. I want to have the option of multiple people being able to book. When we're finished, go ahead and just select save changes. Next, weekly availabilities. So within Healthy, you're able to set reoccurring openings that clients would be able to log on to their app or browser and book with you. Um, this, prevent, this is really helpful for if you want clients to be able to book for themselves without having to reach out to you, preventing a little bit of the back and forth uh, and cutting down hopefully a little bit of that admin work of trying to find the perfect time with the client. Um, these availabilities to set, we're just gonna drag and drop whatever time we want. We need to undo them 
you can just unselect them the same way. Keep in mind, these are reoccurring. So these availabilities would be not only for the week that we're setting it, for each week moving forward until I remove them or edit them as well. And lastly, under calendar, external sync. So within Healthy, you have the ability of connecting or linking your external calendar to Healthy's calendar, meaning I can connect Google Calendar, Outlook, or iCal to Healthy. So when an appointment is booked in Healthy, that event will then automatically appear in my external calendar and vice versa. When an appointment is booked within Google, if I have like a doctor's appointment or a business meeting, or I'm just on vacation or out of the office, that event will also be pulled over into Healthy and block those times out. This is a very useful feature because it prevents double booking and also keeps you from having to compare and contrast two different calendars every time that you're scheduling. So now that we've set up a lot of, we made a lot of choices on the back end. We have our appointment types, our availability set up. We, we know we have our calendar linked. We're now ready to use our calendar and start scheduling because all of those decisions have already successfully been made. So to use your calendar, easiest way to do this is whatever time I want to book with a client, simply drag and drop that time and a prompt will pop up for you to start filling out. In this, you'll be able to add a client. So let's go ahead and add my client, Ray. You'll be able to select the appointment types. So if you remember, these are the ones that we've created already. So then if they show up in this dropdown and I'm able to select the exact one I want. So with Ray, let's go ahead and do a virtual follow-up. And then contact types, again, healthy video call, in-person or phone call. So for this one, let's go ahead and do a healthy video call. And then here, time and date, I've already dragged and dropped the exact time I want, but you can always edit that here. Another nice feature within this one scheduling is the ability to schedule a repeating appointment. So for example, if I know I'm gonna work with Ray every Thursday at the same time for the next few weeks, I don't have to manually go in and schedule it each and every single time. What I can do is just create that as a repeating appointment, shares both of us some time of trying going back and forth to try and find that perfect time. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and select weekly. And let's say we're gonna meet for the next three weeks. So this way, three appointments are automatically gonna be added to my account. Three appointments are automatically added to my client's account as well. Let's go ahead and select create. So if you remember previously, we set up how many reminders via text and email we wanted to set up. We do that first because now clients are automatically going to start receiving a confirmation email and reminder emails for this appointment as soon as that appointment is created. I can then click on that appointment and see all the details and information I need to know, essentially the who, what, when, where of that appointment. When this appointment has occurred or I want to change the status, on the bottom of this, you'll see an option for appointment status, where then I can mark this appointment as occurred, canceled, no-show, or rescheduled. For this one, we're going to go ahead and mark that as occurred and select update. Marking appointments as occurred, canceled, no show to reschedule is helpful when we start having a lot more appointments on our schedule and we want to keep track of how many no shows, how many uh, rescheduled have I had in a month, week, quarter, or a year. Um, and a little bit from now, I'm going to show you how to pull some of that data where you can keep track over time. So really useful as a best practice to always mark the statuses of your appointments, just so when you need to backtrack or you want to start pulling data from Healthy, you'll be able to get a much, a much, a very clear picture of what's been going on with your organization. So on top of the being able to schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments, you also have the option within Healthy to schedule group appointments, and they're done in a very, very similar way. So what I'm going to do for group appointment is I'm just going to drag and drop. And instead of individual, I'm going to select group up top here. So with group appointments, I am, of course, always able to manually add people in. But I'm also able to select maximum number of attendees. This means I can set it up where, for in this case, 20 people are able to book an appointment with me for this. And that's my limit. What this helps with is clients are going to be able to go onto your website they can go into the app or the browser and see these group appointments that you've created on your schedule and being able to select those appointments and book on their end, which would of course notify you as well. Same steps, we're going to select uh, appointment site. So in this case, let's go ahead and do a, a quick, we're doing a quick 15 minute webinar with, with some of the people that I work with. We're going to do a video call. Again, the date and time, we're going to go ahead and select create. 
And again, clients automatically get confirmation emails when a client signs up on their end, you would also be notified of that every single time as well. So previously, we also talked about setting up weekly or reoccurring availabilities where clients can book on their end. With Healthy, you also have the option to change this up where if you might have certain days where you have different availabilities, you can add those as on a more ad hoc basis. So for example, let's say on Saturday, I typically, or Friday, I typically don't work evenings, but um, I, need, I wanted to open up a few, more, uh, a few more openings for my clients. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop just like I did for appointments, but this time I'm gonna select availability. I can select the date, start time, and the end time, and go ahead and select, let's say we'll go to 5.30, and go ahead and select create. So what that does is it adds a temporary availability for that specific day. You can tell the difference because of the squiggly lines here, that means that that has been added for that day and that day alone, while the light green boxes are the ones that happen every single week. So for example, if I go next week, I'll see those times are not open. These are just open for this, for these two times here. This is a nice feature if you want to keep your schedule flexible, you occasionally want to add extra hours, but you don't want to completely open up your entire day uh, for clients to be able to schedule with you. As far as scheduling goes, the, as we already mentioned before, the options are to for you to be able to do this or clients can log into the browser and app. Another scenario is you also have the ability to select share calendar here where you can copy this link. You are able to send this link via email. You can put that on your website. You can have a blog post or social media post where this link, when the client clicks on it, will allow them to schedule appointments based on your openings. So this is a really good use case for, you have a few people who might be interested. You just want to send them a link to schedule without them having to, basically for them to be able to, to, to do it on their end themselves. So now let's talk a little bit about the organization calendar. Organization calendar works very similar to the individual calendar, but this is for this is for organizations that have multiple providers who are working for the same group or company. So under organization, I'm able to see everyone's schedule in the same area and be able to both view it and also add schedule and reschedule there as well. So in this case, I have in this group practice, we have two different providers with two different schedules. So what I'm able to do is go in here and see Melanie's schedule and also be able to view Kim's schedule. And this also helps with if someone's reaching out and wants to schedule with one of these org members, if there's someone who works at your front desk or an admin person, they're able to schedule for them. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at this, someone would like an appointment today. I see Melanie is pretty booked today, so we're going to give Kim an appointment. So we will just do the same thing we did previously, is drag and drop the time we want, select that client's name, select the provider in this case, so I can decide who I want, to, which provider I want to book with. I'm going to select Kim for this, and go ahead and select Create. So with the organization calendar, I'm able to schedule on behalf of other people, see their schedules, and also be able to access all the information for those appointments. Another awesome feature in this area is if I want to create a group appointment, I'm also able to do this here. The, the addition in the organization area is I'm able to add multiple organization members. So maybe Melanie and Kim are co-hosting a webinar and we, this, what this will do is it will add this to their calendar on both of their calendars without having to schedule twice. So it's very similar to how we previously scheduled a group call, we'll just select group, but in this case, we're gonna select an additional board member. Let's go ahead and select the date and the time. And it's right, great, and that will, add, that will add this appointment to both of their appointments for the same thing. So now that we've talked about setting up everything on the back end as far as appointment settings, appointment types, uh, syncing our calendar, setting up availabilities, and scheduling, the next part of this is what we're going to talk about is tracking all of this information or tracking appointment history, tracking appointment information. There's a, a few ways to do that. One is, as always, the easiest way to go into a client's account is to select the client's type of client's name here and select view profile. 
So in each of clients account on the top page is an a record of their appointments. So I can see not only all their upcoming appointments here, I'm also, I'm also able to select their past appointments and I can also select appointments that didn't occur. So this is a really quick way to look at one client's information. So I can see exactly how many appointments Ray has done, how many didn't occur, canceled or no-showed, and then how many upcoming appointments we have as well, which is great for a quick look into an individual. But what you're also able to do in Healthy is run some appointment history reports. Um, as always, all the reports in Healthy you can run live under the report section here. So in this case, reports can generate a lot of different CSVs with a lot of different detailed information. Uh, for example, if I just need every client's name and email. But in this case, for appointments, what we want to run is your appointments report. This is going to allow you to create a giant snapshot of everything that's been going on appointment-wise or scheduling-wise in your organization. So all we have to do for this is select your appointments report, which is then going to allow you to pick a time frame. So this is really helpful if I want to see, I want to see everything this year, or maybe I just want to see everything this month. So kind of being, being able to, to decide exactly how much information you want. Well, and then the next step is going to be to generate that report on the bottom right. So once that's generated, you're going to get a, a pop-up saying here that it's being generated. Depending on how much content's in there, it can take up to 30 minutes. If you have a lot of information in there, sometimes it's, it's usually a little bit slow, a little bit faster than that. But what we're going to go is we're going to select general reports, folder, and documents. So within Healthy, all the generated reports or CSVs of that information are going to live under documents in a folder called generated reports. And what I'm able to do then is I can download that CSV and see all of that data and what it looks like on a, on a more system wide level. Thank you for watching this healthy deep dive video. Be sure to check out our other deep dive videos as well. You can find additional resources to help you make the most of your healthy membership here. Thank you.